Welcome everyone to another Let's Play World of Warcraft. Today we are going to the Overgrowth in the Southern Barrens and we are going to meet with Makaba Flathoof there and see what kind of problems they are having there. Because there's apparently something wild going on there. I mean, we can already see like, holy shit, there's like so much plant life here and that's not how the Barrens usually look like. And this all happened after the Cataclysm. So yeah, let's check out this, this area. And I actually think that, like a lot of people say, oh, the Cataclysm was really, really bad because it ruined like a lot of areas and stuff. It did make some areas way better though. I actually like this atmosphere. It reminds me a bit of Nagrand, right? Because Nagrand looks also a bit like that. Yo, we're entering the, the jungle. Holy shit, what is this? Can we save this person? Someone is being attacked by some tentacle or something. What is this? Tauraju refugee. Okay, we saved someone. G -g -g get me out of here. Camp Unafi. What is this? Holy shit. I guess they're eating those uh, spring striders or striders like freaking chickens here. How will my mount react if, if it sees it? <laughs> okay, I, I'm too cruel. I'm very cruel. I shouldn't do this. <laughs> and um, Makaba Flathoof. Oh. Uh, years ago, the Grim Tondent raided my village. The pain, the anger, the loss still, they weigh on my heart. And now I find myself giving comfort and aid to others who have lost their village to a savage attack. Signals in the sky. So my sister recognized the old signals. Her hunter's eyes are as sharp as ever. Corgro, when we first set up this camp, we were at the edge of this jungle. Now look at it. Something is amiss. It's cool that they gave like this kind of warning signals though. Otherwise you wouldn't be here, right? May the eternal sun Keeping the dogs at bay. Not everyone who fled Taurajo was able to make it to Unafi, Korgrol. Some died of wounds along the way. Others were jumped by opportunistic Quillbore. I'll take care of the grim task of finding and gathering the bodies. But there is something you can do for me. Um, heck... Hecklefang, Hecklefang scavengers prowl the land south of here and are savaging the corpses, tearing at their bowels and dragging away the limbs of the dead. That's disgusting. Uh, please in their numbers so that I can perform the pro proper funerary rites. When the refugees fled north from Tarajo, some were separated as darkness closed in. Many were taken prisoner by the Bristleback Quillbore, who set up camp west and southwest uh, of here. I'm not certain what the Quillbore hoped to get from us by capturing our refugees. All they have earned is my ire, and all they'll get in return is vengeance. Rescue my trapped brothers and sisters and kill their captors to send a message to the Quillbore. Go in. Former innkeeper. I'm so sorry. He lost his freaking inn. <laughs> That's a cool name. Lane Tall Grass. So how tall is the grass? Very tall. This camp was built at the edge of this jungle and already it is overwhelmed by plant growth. Something unnatural is happening here. Earlier I made the mistake of sending some of the healthier refugees out to gather nuts and berries. Okay, that's your dinner, I guess. Those that returned talked about the plant life actually grasping at their legs or even picking them up. Wait, is that the one we freed from the tentacle, like the giant one? I worry about those that haven't come back yet. Warlock, please rescue the refugees trapped in the grasping overgrowth around the camp. Okay, five of them. Winds be at your back. They have a lot of issues here, holy shit. What should we do first? Should we just... Yeah, we should free them first. Wow. Why don't we get trapped though? Okay, first one saved. Is there actually a timer? Like, you must be quick, otherwise they die. Maybe not. Wow. 
Wow, my pet hit so hard. Hope we get some b uh, better armor and stuff from those quests as well soon. Wait, what healed me? Okay, three more. Wait a second, we freed one. What is if they are just exactly five and because we freed that one? Ah, oh, not again. Oh, imagine they were like tameable on a hunter. Oh, but there are, I think I remember there was like a battle pet with this kind of skin. What's this? Why is a snake attacking us? Ah, yeah, Hand of Gul'dan is an AoE skill, that's why. Holy shit, that's a strong snake. It can take so... That's so tanky. Too bad we can't fly yet. What is it? Like level 30, right? So... Ah, there's another one. <laughs> and those are the ones that eat the corpses. Let's kill them. I'm just making a half stone middle of combat. But I do need half stones because I need to drain my half to heal my pet and then heal myself again. I find those quests in the barrens to actually be quite short. But that's good, that means we can level well. How's our inventory looking? Ooh, almost full. We have to be careful. Next time we turn our quest in, I will look for a trader. So we can sell our junk. Not again, this annoying snake. It's freaking attacking me. Great. I've had enough of this jungle. <laughs> I bet you do. But the only reason why they are feeding on the corpses, and I'm not trying to excuse them now, but. They're just starving probably, right? Like they came from the desert area and the desert there isn't much stuff so they come here where it's like green. And if they happen to come across some corpses, like they're just gonna eat it. Because they need to, to eat to live, right? But they're lazy, they could just uh, hunt those. Like there's so much uh, game here going on. Wait, that one's actually... Ah, never mind. I was about to say, that one has some value. This was like 7 silver. <laughs> the pet is literally killing. Look, and now they can eat those instead of the, the torrent. Okay, I think... We only need to save... Ah, I was correct earlier. We shouldn't have freed that guy before we picked up the quest. Because we have now exactly 4 out of 5. And the one I was here, I think it was this tree. We already saved him. And now we are missing one. Oh wait, he respawned. Okay, it respawned. Yeah, we, we should not have killed that one. That's the last one. Alright, let's turn those quests in. Why don't we ever get like trinkets and, and rings? Only one. What brings you Keeping here? the dogs at bay. So it is done. Normally these scavengers are part of Earth Mother's cycle of life. 
But on the heels of the devastation wrecked by both the alliance and the cataclysm, their numbers grow overwhelming. It is good to thin them out. I mean, sure, if they have a lot to eat, then what will happen? They make a lot of babies. We'll be at your back. Thank you, Corgrol. But now, uh, on to the larger question. Where is this overgrowth coming from and why is it raging out of control? The great arc druid Noralex recently appeared here in the Baron Seas, either behind this mess or trying to fix it. Wow, what a suspicious figure. Either way, you should talk with him before this jungle engulfs the whole world. He is in a small torrent camp to the southeast. Along the way, it would be helpful for you to gather plant samples for him to study. Uh, the newest flower buds will tell him a great deal about the most recent changes in the jungle. Okay, that's weird. Like she, uh, she's thinking that maybe he could be behind it, but she still wants to help this guy and stuff. Okay, that's weird. Flower, unusual flower. Oh, here they are. Who is this? Oh, another player. Like, I'm actually always confused when people have war mode on, because they are green, right? And NPCs are also green, so I'm like, is that, is that a player? Or is that an NPC? Because <laughs> I know players are blue, usually, unless they have war mode on, then they appear green to me. I feel bad for those. Like, I wonder what this plant will do with them. Like, I, I'm always imagining this like the tentacle of some large beast that lives underground. Holy shit, and getting 10 of those, this will be tough. Why is this one glowing? Huh? What's up with that strider? Is that a special one? It's maybe for a quest later. Okay, while they are fighting, I'm quickly getting the, the, the flower. Friend or foe? Okay, that's friend. Rare. I'm cruel. I'm just picking up the flower and letting this person stay there. More flowers, please. I guess they're only growing in the shade, but here is nothing. So maybe we should skip this location. Go to the trees there. Ah, there's one. Two, even. Ah. Wow, they do look sick, though. They make... They would make great hunter pets. Like, like, look at their yellow eyes and all those spikes they have. I'm inventory full. Well, it almost looked like this one was trying to pick us up. Wait, apparently we are in combat. No, my pet was in combat. How? How is my pet in combat? Was it from those tentacles? I thought they, they don't turn hostile because they're already holding something. Wow. This looks like a magical river or something. Yeah, we're so gonna level up in, in a few minutes. Can't wait for 20, we're gonna be so much faster. Let's... While we are near to it, let's just free some of the, the refugees. And then let's return. Okay, there's one, one of the Quilbor camps outposts. What is this? Outgrowth. Okay, we have to slay them. Let's go. Ah! What is this? Mm, 
no, this one will pull more. Yeah, Blood Elf Hunter, level 50. What is a level 50 player doing here? OMG. We pulled quite many. You are kidding me. Screw that. Ah! Okay, this is on cooldown. Why can't I not use a health stone? Okay, we survived, but our pet didn't. One minute cooldown. I have this. I'm fine. Now we have to resummon our pet. I'm still in combat? What kind of range do they have? Huh? Nothing attacks me. Why am I still in combat? Do I have a combat bug? Okay, here, let's go. Yeah, we pulled too many. Let's eat an apple. <laughs> Do we have anything that gives more value to us? Uh, meat. Let's switch to meat. <sighs> I remember in like WoW Classic, when I was leveling a character, each couple of NPCs I need to freaking sit down, eat and drink stuff. Especially if you are like leveling a, a warlock. Like warlocks they need to constantly freaking drink stuff while leveling. Only when, once you get to like maybe level 30 or something it gets a bit easier. Stuff so expensive. Especially if you don't have good gear. Okay, let's just nuke them one by one. Because there I already see three cages. Pretty sure those are the, the, the refugees. Bloodshot. I'm so sure I will kill them. Let's just kill them now. Yeah, that was smart. Okay, I think that's enough. Are the refugees still gathering up at Camp uh, Unafi or Unafi? Yeah, they are. Let's see, here's one cage and here's another one. That means we're gonna have enough. I only need two more of those. Yeah, Warlock combat feels really fun and interesting. And now you guys are going to laugh at me for this, but I think the Quilbo do have the potential to become an allied race because they are kind of smart. Like they are not that stupid like some, some other beast folks that you uh, fight against, right? So I, I see that they could make it as an allied race at some point, right? Maybe like a certain tribe of them that is like more peaceful or something. Because if you look at the trolls, like the dark spirit trolls for example, don't they also have like quite simple uh, buildings sort of? Like a lot of, uh, of the races except like for the blood elves have more like simple structures within the horde so. Ah, I need your help, pet. Uh, attack this one.
Okay, our last one. All right, let's turn those quests in. First this one and then let's meet the druid. I'm curious what kind of druid this is. I really like this zone. Okay, one thing is confusing me now. How the heck did they get ships here? Was here a lake before or something? See, what, what would they want to do with this ship in the middle of nowhere? They want to uh, go here with the ship? Like, this is too small. It's a tiny lake. Well met. The Quilba are attacking because they uh, perceive weakness. Strength is the only language they understand, so we will show them strength. Makaba withdraws a large horn from his satchel. This is admittedly crude work, but I'll, but it will do. Bristleback leaders use horns like these to challenge one another for dominance. Korgul, I want you to challenge the Bristleback champion. Holy shit. Uh, Sabersnout. What a name, Sabersnout. To single combat. Defeat him in front of his followers. Blow the horn at the Bristleback challenge ring due south of here. We shall meet again. Leather armor. Okay, we can sell a lot of junk that we do not need. What's this? Now we have something better. Mystery meat. I wonder what that is. Do we need a wand? It does have a higher level though, but... What's this? No, I need to keep this. Do I need this? Not really. Go in peace. All right, we have some more space. Um, let's challenge this guy. Then we move on. It does look creepy. It looks like something straight out of a freaking horror movie or something. Like the, the swamp monster or something. That pulls its victims at night into the freaking swamp and people go missing and the village is wondering where they went and Then some young people come to an area and they discover some dark secret <laughs> Yo, I think I should be a story writer for stuff like for movies even games like I always come up with like crazy ideas for stuff So here's the ring, and now we must uh, blow this horn here, right? Makora! Challenge you to Makora! Yes, I challenge you, Makora! But is it a 1v1 because I have freaking uh, pets? Does it even count as 1v1? You are strong, but... Hey, that's not fair fighting here. Um, I must break you now. You're not gonna break me, never ever. I'm unbreakable. Yeah, he's just gonna die to the dots anyway. <laughs> Success. Uh, it was obvious we would win. I mean, just look at us. We are freaking OP Org Warlock. We know the dark arts of demon summoning and stuff, so... Of course. I can see some people being into something like that. Tentacles, holy shit. Imagine they end up censoring tentacles because it's so hentai like. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, we did get a lot of stuff censored. Like, even, like, 
did you guys know that Blizzard in patch 9.1.5 they removed like a lot of flirt emotes and, and jokes and stuff? Like it's crazy. Greetings. Have you taken the Bristol bags down a pack or two? <laughs> yeah. What? He attacks you with a dozen boars? I guess Quilbo have their own ideas of what single combat means. He literally broke the rules, but he still lost. Cheater. Still, the bristleback will be left reeling after the blow you delivered. It will not be long before a new champion rises amongst them to steer up trouble. But at least this buys us some time to get these refugees relocated safely. Thank you, Kogro. The survivors owe you a great debt. Walk with the earth. Alright. Walk with the earth, mother. See ya. Uh. What brings you here? Even though this isn't much damage we took, we still lost 5 person, so... Yeah, let's repair. Oh, I'm just gonna ignore this. It's far from us. Yeah. Oh, are those night elf runes? Yeah, we are in some night elf zone. I can uh, tell from those lamps. One thing's interesting, like the architecture and stuff of the night elves. It does have something traditional Japanese also about it, right? Like I'm pretty sure Blizzard, when they created like night elven structures and stuff, they thought a lot about like Japanese culture, but they did also bring in a bit of like ancient Greek culture in or something, right? If you look at some of those, like, oh, what summon Sayat? Who is Sayat? Oh, that's the uh, male succub succubus. Or succubus. How do you even pronounce that? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, guys. English is my second language, so sometimes I don't know how to pronounce certain words. But I think you, you say succubus or succubus, right? Okay, that's the druid, Naralex. As I thought he was a tauren actually at first. Uh, as druids we are tasked with protecting the balance of nature. My life's work has gone against this. In my folly I've soon chaos and this divine crop must be reaped before it spreads further. So it's actually interesting because I always thought like druids, they love that stuff grows and like the land is uh, very fertile, right? So, so what happened here? Did you know that the Barrens was once a lush forest? Thousands of years ago, before the first sundering, it was verdant and thriving, watched over by the Caldorai. Uh, but when the continents were torn apart and this land became separated as what we call Kalimdor, this valley of nature became a harsh sun-scorched plain. When I first learned this, I saw it as a great tragedy. I decided I would find a way to regrow the forest once more. While studying the land, I discovered a cave that stretched deep beneath the earth. These waterways carried underground rivers for miles beneath the parched savanna above. I named them the Wailing Caverns, for the howls made by the wind and steam as they cursed through its depths. This would be the instrument of revival, I thought. The water had already bubbled to the surface as small lush oases throughout the barrens. If it were imbued, enhanced this growth could spread across the entire land. So what did you do? My plan was to connect these underground waters directly to the Emerald Dream itself. With my faithful disciples, I journeyed deep within the Wailing Cavern, settled into meditation and entered the dream. Through my own body, this world was connected to it. It was there that everything went wrong. What happened? I came upon what I can only describe as an overwhelming corruption within the Emerald Dream, an unending nightmare that seized me in its claws and tore at my very mind. I could not break free of its grasp, my disciples were unable to wake me. Whatever this corruption was, was it found its way into our world through my body. What? Holy shit. I did indeed channel its energies into the Wailing Caverns and its horrible influence twisted the white life there into chaotic divides forms. Even my disciples were affected, their minds overcame, uh, overcome by madness and savagery, they took on the forms of serpents and called themselves the Druids of the Fang. How did you escape? I was saved by my last disciple Muyo. 
<laughs> Muyo, what a cool name, and a band of adventurers. I considered the entire incident a failure. It wasn't until the cataclysm occurs that I realized I'd been far too successful. I mean, sure, everything is green here. When the barrage was cracked apart, a great font of underground water was breached and flowed up to the surface. Full of energies, it was imbued in the whaling caverns. Life immediately sprung from the earth around it and the animals thrived and then it continued to grow uncontrollably unchecked. <coughs> now I have to answer for my arrogance in thinking I could dictate the flow and shape of nature myself. This overgrowth must be stopped before it chokes out... Uh, what before it chokes out the natural wildlife entirely? Be careful. So he was responsible for this I stuff. Holy shit. Ah, samples from different parts of the overgrowth. This will be immensely helpful. Yes, thank you, Warlock. Good luck, Biological intervention. The energies unleashed here have surged through the wildlife, twisting them into powerful and unstable forms. If allowed to spread beyond this gro growth, the deviates will wreak havoc on the existing ecosystem, devouring local prey and driving out the weaker natural creatures. You must go and kill the population of the overgrowth. Return when this task is done. Kill five deviate tarot tooths and five deviate plane striders. Alright, let's do this. Yeah, if you look at them, that's that's why they have something magical on them. Didn't I say this earlier that they look like something maybe we need for a quest? I was correct. I feel like questing through cataclysm time walking, it's really fun. Legion is also something. You can only do like uh, another character for Legion or so. Or even Mist of Pandera if you want. And yeah, by the way guys, if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. Really appreciate that. Okay, there are, oh, there are many here. There's a perfect spot. I see, th I see three more. Ooh. Okay, almost accidentally double cast. So another plane strider. I wonder if the land in time will become dry again. Like maybe it's just temporary because the water like how do I say this? If the water comes from like underground it must uh, like at some point it runs out, right? Because there's no rain. In order for the water to fill again there needs to be a lot of rain. So even though the water comes from underground, I'm pretty positive that in several years the land will be dry again here. I, it would just make a sense from an ecological perspective, right? Holy shit. My pet is dying. In fact, those planes are actually stronger than those uh, raptors. Or it just feels like that. I wish I had more haste. Because you guys know why haste is so important on the warlock. If you want to have many pets out, you need a good uh, chunk of haste. So you can keep spamming those and refill those shards. Because one, one shot of this gives you one shot, right? And they have just a certain duration that they are out. So you have to constantly weave spells in order to keep summoning and to keep an uh, army up of those. So, we really need to look out for anything that has haste in it. This makes us so much more OP. It's the most important uh, stat on Warlock. At least Demonology. I don't know about others, but Demonology is very important. I keep getting so many recipes. What is this? All cooking. I, 
I need to level my cooking skills and become a master chef. <laughs> There's another one. Okay, I think, yeah, we have all. We have enough. Somehow like this uh, mount. It, it looks very simple, right? <laughs> it's funny. Because each time it jumps, it flaps its wings in a very funny fashion. Like, look at this. Holy shit. It looks like it's really trying to fly, but it can't. As druids, we are tasked with protecting the balance of nature. Okay, that we already read that. A biological intervention. Thank you, Kogro. I'm pleased to see you return intact. The viciousness I've been seeing among these creatures is startling. To harvest chaos. If I have truly sown chaos, it is time for reaping. The lumbering outgrowth of plant life shamble through the imbued system here. Uh, the imbued, sorry, stream here. Growl. They are a direct manifestation of the unstable forces mutating this area. Slay as many as you can and we might be able to slow the spread of the overgrowth further. And while you're at it, be on lookout for parts of them that appear especially corrupted. Bring any such pieces to me. Uh, kill five outgrowths and find a squirming heart. Oh wow. But yeah guys, that's it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. There will be many more Let's Plays coming. And whew, I like this area so far. South and Barons is cool. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time.